all my life I wanted a happy marriage because I saw one in my parents. Although I was a virgin when I got married, inside I was a harlot, you know. I, I had a very sensual focus. Our marriage lasted six years. I left uh, Tom, took my two boys, moved back to the Washington, D.C. area, shook my fist in the face of God and said, to hell with you, God. I'll see you around town. I'm going to find someone to love me. And so I went, I dated from one man to another. And I'm telling you all this because it has, it impacts the children, you know, and, and what the children are watching and the children are seeing what's going on in your life. Well, on July 16th, 1963, I came to know uh, I, di I had divorced Tom, as I told you, and um, I came to know Jesus Christ. And uh, I just fell on my knees. I was trying to be good. I was trying to stop being immoral and that, and, uh, and I couldn't. And I cried out to God, God, I don't care what you do to me. I don't care if I never see another man as long as I live. I don't care if you paralyze me from the neck down, if you will just give me peace. And he gave me the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I, I went down on my knees, and when I came up, I felt like a virgin. I felt clean, you know, and somehow I knew that wherever I went, that Jesus would be going with me, and I couldn't dress sensually like I was dressing uh, before. Later, I would read in the Bible in James that the tongue is a little member but it can be set on fire by hell. And the things I think we don't realize is the impact. You know, and when I was growing up and the kids were hurting you, you were taught to say, sticks and stones will hurt my bones, but names will never hurt me. I mean, sticks and stones will crush my bones, but names will never hurt me. Names hurt, names hurt. I was just reading a, a book by uh, Julie, I cannot remember her last name, a small book and how her father and her mother called her stupid and how she believed that and how he misused her and, and, and that. What we say has tremendous impact and, and that's why I'm so passionate about the Word of God because His words are spirit and His words are life and His words uh, go deep into us and, and uh, they don't return to Him empty. They have have a purpose. But anyway, so after that, um, I felt like God wanted me to go to Bible school and I took my two boys and I went to Bible school and uh, in a process of praying about a husband, God sent, uh, told me I was going to marry Jack Arthur. I went home, he was a missionary, I got his card, his prayer card so I know what he looked like when he came along and to make a long story short, we were married. Then God took us into Precept Ministries International and this is what I think is the most important thing that any parent could do, and that is to teach your child the Word of God. Our ministry, Precept Ministries International, exists to establish people in God's Word. Children, teens, men, women, so that they know, that they know that this is what God says. So we teach them, the children, the teens, the adults, the same way. We teach them the inductive method of Bible study. The inductive method of Bible study means that you go to the Word of God itself. You and the Word and God. So this is the book. This is God has spoken. He uh, said through Jesus, and he was, and it was a quote from uh, the Old Testament, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every, every, word that comes from the mouth of God. So this is the mouth of God. So God gave us his word. And so there's God, put a triangle up there. Here's the word of God and here's me. And so this is inductive study. It's God speaking through his word in the power of his Holy Spirit, opening the eyes of my understanding as I learn to observe God's word, to, to discover, what does it say to ask the five W's and an H? Who and what and when and where and why and how? 
you know, which includes the application in, in all of that. So it's observation, which is like the foundation. What does this say? In Psalm 119, he says, I have not turned aside from your ordinances, for you yourself have taught me. And see, if I know for myself, it's not what mama said, and mama's supposed to tell him, and daddy's supposed to tell him, and the preacher's supposed to tell him. But you know, they don't always get it straight. So if I know what it says myself, if God has told me and I disobey, I know that I'm disobeying God. If God has promised and I believe him, I know that it's God that has promised. And so uh, the observation is the foundation of everything. You build on that interpretation. Observation is what does it say? Interpretation is what does it mean? All right, so you said this, what does it mean? Application is, is now not what does that mean to you or what do you think that means? Application means I know what it says, I know what it means, and I'm gonna live in the light of it, or I uh, often tell uh, people application can be <laughs> You know, a change of mind because I once believed this, but I find out what God says, and so I, I change, I change my mind. And if I change my mind, then I'm walking in a new direction, and so um, that's what our ministry is designed to do. And then I think about Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, you know, there are two prayers in Ephesians, one in the first chapter and one in the third chapter. And Ephesians is about a book of warfare and what it means to be in Christ, Christ in you. That's a key phrase. And we have people, when you read your Bible, kids love this. We teach them to mark for identification. But there's a prayer and it says, every family in heaven and on earth is named after God. Now, if I'm named after God, that means the name tells who a person is. You know, he's El El Yon. He's the most high God, shows his sovereignty. You know, he's Jehovah Sid can you, he's our righteousness. So I can be righteous. I can and being righteous is doing what God says is right. So anyway, we have a study for children on that. Lord, what's your name? God, what's your name? And then we have uh, an adult study, uh, Lord, I want to know you, which is a study on the names of God. So we take our adult studies and then we bring them down to a child's level, but they, they really, really get to know. But I was thinking about this in, in light of talking uh, to you today and, and that if you want to know how to have a godly family. If you want to know how to parent, watch God. Watch God. God has a family. You know, we have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Spirit, we have us, we are His children. We are His children by adoption. We are His children by being born again into uh, His family. Uh, you look at the fact that God uh, uh, has commandments for us. And we are to obey those commandments. And we know from Galatians chapter 3 that he tells us that the law was our schoolmaster to keep us under obedience until faith in Jesus Christ should come. When you look at, at, at God and at that pattern and you understand the purpose of the law was a schoolmaster to bring you to obedience in Jesus Christ until, until there was that awakening of grace. David is the son that Jack and I had. And, uh, and I wanted a daughter and God gave us a son. I had a daughter's name, Deborah Ruth. I wanted Deborah because she stood for the Lord, Ruth because she followed the Lord and, uh, and that. And he gave us a, a boy. And when he was born, I didn't, uh, you know, you didn't know what sex you were getting. And so when he came out a little boy, we had to have a name for him, and so we named him David, a man after God's own heart. And we have, he, he lives up to his name. He is a man after God's own heart. So um, I just, I, I think that in parenting, if I can look that every family is named, that every family in, in heaven and on earth is named after God, then God becomes my pattern. 
the way he deals with his children. He chastens his children, whom he loves, he chastens. So I go through the Word of God and look at it from, from that perspective, and then I know I'm doing it God's way. And if I understand God, and if I understand salvation, and, and I know his character, and I think that's the most important thing, is understanding that God's sovereign that he rules over all. But if I know those things, then I'm able, and, and teach them to my children, then I'm able and they are able to do, deal with any situation of, of life. And why don't you ask God what your child's spiritual gift may be? And then prepare them. So I ask God, what would David's spiritual good, what might it be? And, uh, and he laid on my heart leadership. And he's now the uh, CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Precept Ministries International that's in 186 countries and in 70 languages. And his heart and his passion is for, for the world. But I read him books on leadership. I would read him about Abraham Lincoln. I took him to see the movie Gandhi because he was a leader. And we discussed the movie Gandhi. I, I would read him uh, other biographies as, as he grew up. So that just preparing him, putting him in, because as a man thinks, so he is. Guard your heart, your mind. When you see heart, your mind, guard your heart, your mind with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. And I think that's why God taught in Deuteronomy 6. Now, when you get your children, you know, as you sit down, as you rise up, as you walk by the way, you know, what are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be discussing God's Word. So the most important thing I would say is teach your child the Word. First of all, God hates divorce. I mean, uh, he, he doesn't like the putting away of your wives because if we, if we understand marriage, the, the picture of marriage is given to us in Ephesians chapter five. And Ephesians chapter five to me is the primary, the primary picture of what a marriage should look like. All the way through that passage, you see the picture of the church and Christ. And, and so, so what he's showing you is Christ provides the pattern for the marriage, for the church. The, the bride of the church is, is, I mean, the bride of Christ is the church. In the Old Testament, the wife of God is Israel. You know, and so you learn from that relationship and you learn from this relationship uh, primarily. So. Christ will never leave us. Christ will never forsake us. Uh, Christ will uh, uh, never walk out and say it's over. When divorce happens, there's a walking out. There's, it's, it's over. It is a division. It puts a child uh, with parent, a parent that's not the real parent. And sometimes that can be very destructive and dangerous. The first thing, though, that you need to do is you need to, to get healed from your divorce. Psalm 107, verse 20, he, um, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. So there's healing in, in the word. It's, it's called the balm. I've written a study, um, and it's a Lord, I have Lord's studies on, on different topics. Lord, is it warfare? Teach me to stand. Lord, give me a heart for you, the study of 2 Corinthians and Paul's life. Lord, I want to know you, a study on the names of God. And uh, then, Lord, heal my hurts. And God has used that, that he's used them all mightily. The favorite one in the prisons is, Lord, is it warfare? But um, Lord, heal my hurts. God has used it to heal people that have been through years of counseling and didn't get healed because it's the word. Jeremiah says, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, O God, and I will be saved. His arm is not short that it cannot rescue, and his ear is not deaf, that it cannot hear. 
And so there's the, the crying uh, to the Lord.